Welcome back. I hope that you're enjoying the show half as much as I am. We have Dr. Diane Pomerantz and her sidekick, Lou, and the sidekick of all sidekicks, <laughs> Hitchcock, here with us today. Hitchcock? He is being so good. You know, we talked about, before we even started the show, I said, you're always upstaged by animals. And he is just wonderful. You what? know we're talking um, about you, don't says, you? Is this a cue? Is this a cue? I am so pretty. Yes, I am. How does, he, how does Hitchcock work? How does a group therapy session with an animal work? Well, I think um, in many ways and on many levels, um, people respond to animals because they're so innocent and they are exactly who they appear to be. There's no pretense. What you see is what you get. This is Hitchcock. There's no agenda. He's not out for you know socioeconomic status or position. Um, he just is who he is, and uh, that in itself is a relief, uh, especially to patients that fear judgment. They're in wheelchairs, uh, they're on walkers, they're on IVs. Um, you know, they don't have a whole lot of time or energy to pay attention to their appearance, as it were. And these animals come in and don't care. They just accept them for who they really are. And also, they're so loving, and they seem, they're so highly intuitive. They seem to have a kind of radar, knowing which person needs them and which person needs to pet them. And Hitchcock knows that. At the grief groups that he attends, at the assisted living centers, he'll go right up to a person and put his head in their lap. And if he doesn't do that, he'll look right into their eyes and say, it's okay, I'm here, pet me. And he'll nuzzle them, you know, and get them to pet him. And of course, that requires the patient to, you know, put out some emotional, um, feeling um, that they may not express toward another human being. Well, and you know, all of the stress management research talks about that animals, mm -hmm. stroking the animals, talking to the animals, playing with the animals, whether you're an adult or a child. Absolutely. I know Any sick age. children have also benefited from mm -hmm. interacting with the animals well. As well, he's worked with autistic kids, cerebral palsy kids. Um, I, I've had six therapy dogs, and I'm going to get two more certified within the next month or so because it's so rewarding. It's so fulfilling. Uh, you get autistic adults that haven't spoken in years, and they love, especially the larger dogs, and we have Alaskan Malamutes as well, and um, they see, they, they tend to use small dogs because they're more accessible to a lot of people, sure. and also for health reasons as far as, you know, breaking something or having a dog that gets too exuberant or whatever, but they love the big dogs. And they've had big dogs in the past, and of course in assisted living, it's so unusual to be with the larger animals. So it's a real treat for them. Um, they, you know, kind of knee level or chest level with a wheelchair person, and um, they just, they uh, evoke a lot of warmth from these people and a lot of love and enjoyment. Let's talk about rescue. now. Our Rescue Dog Family Album is the book that you wrote. We need to talk about rescue in general because it's an important topic in this day and time especially. Mm -hmm. The economy, and I know when Hurricane Katrina came For, through, it impacted yeah. the lives of so many animals. So tell me a little bit about rescue. You know, it's really interesting. I don't think I was ever aware of the extent to which there are homeless animals until I moved to Texas. Um, although in LA we lived in a cul-de-sac and people would dump their dogs and my husband and I would put out the signs and take them to the vet and try and find a home for them if we couldn't find their owners, etc. So I guess the roots of my work began then. But when Caesar died and I got involved with the SPCA, I'd see these animals come in that were surrendered by their owners because they didn't match the decor of their homes or because people suddenly developed allergies. Um, ultimately discovering that these animals had heartworm issues, they had health issues, uh, there are, people got um, impatient with their animals because they were getting older just as we tend to get impatient and and so easily dismiss and discard our elderly um, same thing with animals and so I, I really um, started rescuing dogs from the SPCA Hitchcock is one of those um, we um, rehabilitated him um, got him socialized took him to obedience got him his canine good citizenship uh, certification and then certification as a therapy dog. So he's been trained. He doesn't just come by this naturally, although in a sense he does. Right. But um, because he certainly has the temperament and is not aggressive toward humans or, or other animals. But the rescue work is so vitally important. People don't understand these are sentient creatures that care so deeply about us. They'll, they'll go to our um, aid at any opportunity. All they want to do is love and please us. 
and uh, they ask for so little. And if you can save the life of a pet like Hitchcock or any of the ones that I talk about in my book, we currently have 22, as you mentioned. And in the past decades, my husband and I have rescued 46 dogs and adopted them. So the, these aren't just dogs that we've paid for their care. Um, those are additional to the ones that we've adopted in our home. And when we moved to Texas, we had two and a half acres of land so that we could accommodate these animals and give them a life um, that, that they would rejoice in, and they have. And it's been so much more joyous and fulfilling for me, I think, than it has been for any of them. But each one brings so many unique lessons and so s enriches your life so deeply that, believe me, it's well worth whatever sacrifice you make to keep these animals. And I know the economy is difficult, and I've written many articles pertaining to the concept that if you can, please keep this animal. You don't know what they're like. When you, when you surrender them to an animal welfare organization, they're terrified. Uh, they're stressed. They're traumatized. And they know. Of course, and their buddies are being euthanized, and ultimately a great percentage of them is going to be euthanized. Kinky Friedman has been a guest yes. on this show many, many, many times. And I know that you know Kinky because he has the uh, Animal Rescue Ranch down in South Texas. And he is exactly like you are. He's passionate about rescue animals and he's passionate about adopting animals like that. And he also keeps a multitude of dogs down at the rescue ranch yes. and that's one of the things that he started. I mean, he's such an outrageous character. I think sometimes people don't realize that there's another the side to him. Soul. Yes, yes. And he's just, he's a wonderful guy. And when you start really talking about those animals and you start talking about the dogs and the cats, mm -hmm. uh, you see a whole different side of him. And I think that it's that way with many of us yes. that care about animals. Yes. That's a very different side mm -hmm. of us. Well, they're so vulnerable and yes. pure of heart. and. Um, we're their caregivers. These are domesticated animals. It's not as though, you know, we've allowed them to maintain a habitat of their own. They depend on us for everything. They're like children in so many respects. And so uh, I encourage people, if they do adopt a pet, understand that it's a lifetime commitment. Mm -hmm. This is not disposable. It's not dispensable. You shouldn't discard it because you've got financial difficulties. It's like discarding a human child. Um, these guys have, you know, so much to give and the service companion dogs and, and on so many levels of our lives they contribute and um, we recount the stories of animals saving the lives of their owners in some precarious situation. I have a friend who has four schnauzers. She's epileptic. The schnauzers predict her epileptic seizures. They work in so many miraculous mm -hmm. ways, uh, trained service dogs that can um, turn the diabetes on the light dogs. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, same same kind of situation exactly. I mean, that's amazing it to is. me it to is. realize that. And an cancer animal. dogs now yes. they're using those as well to detect cancer. I just think that's stunning. I mean, who knew that? Yeah. But yet, animals are so intuitive because. They, they talk, but they don't Just talk not in this words. kind of language. Exactly. Precisely. They articulate differently and they're eloquent differently. Now, what about volunteer opportunities? The SPCA, we've talked about volunteers briefly, but what kind of opportunities might our viewers avail oh, themselves please of? please do that. There are so many rescue groups in need of foster homes, foster parents that will take a dog in, uh, make sure it's vaccinated, spayed, neutered, taken care of on a temporary basis, and then find homes for them through rescue organizations. And for people that may not be familiar with rescue organizations, uh, if you Google any particular breed of cat or dog, whether it's Himalayan, Persian, Siamese, there are rescue organizations uh, for poodles. I mean, dogs that seem fairly exotic that you would never think of in terms of rescue per se. And um, if you contact these organizations, there's always some way to help them in terms of fundraising, in terms of saving lives, because that's what they do. They take these animals in, they rescue them, they literally save the lives of these animals and rehabilitate them and get them, get them to the point where they are adoptable. And I've adopted many, um, many dogs from rescue organizations, Dachshund Rescue of Houston, for example. I have five dachshunds and, um, you know, three of them come from Dachshund Rescue of Houston and, uh, you know, the SPCA, of course, they're always looking for volunteers of every variety for adoption, um, for adoptions, etc. So. 
I mean, I'm sure there are opportunities to work in the office with oh, paperwork, yes, absolutely. work with the animals, training. The thing that, that strikes me is when you do some kind of volunteer work, that's the kind of work mm -hmm. that you, you two have been talking about with the grief, an opportunity to become trained and to continue that lifelong learning for yourself right. and learn about a whole different area, especially if you're really into animals. I hate to use that word, right, but, but right. It's, a, it's a good it's phrase. Yeah, it, it is. is. And, you know, offsite adoption counseling and helping people decide whether it is right to adopt a pet, that's really important. People need to think that before they adopt, this is a lifetime commitment, but also their budgetary parameters, their vet bills that you're going to pay, just like little kids, these guys break their bones. Uh, they contract illnesses uh, that require veterinary care. They have to be spayed, neutered, vaccinated to ensure their health. They have to be fed properly and regularly. Um, um, they require, absolutely require interaction. They do not do well left alone like latchkey kids. You don't want a latchkey dog. So if this is not, you know, fitting the parameters of your lifestyle, please don't adopt. Don't adopt the cute puppy, the cute kitten, and when you get it mm -hmm. home, you've got to realize it will not always be the puppy. It will not always be mm -hmm. the kitten. It's going to grow up. Right. It's going to have a personality and the personality needs to fit within your home. You need to understand that this is a major commitment. Mm -hmm. Now we're running out of time. Let's talk about the book briefly, Diane. Where can our viewers find copies of not only this book, our Rescue Dog Family Album, but also the grief counseling books that you have? Oh, and it's not just grief counseling. It's caring about our aging animal companions Good. and animal companions, our friends, teachers, and guides. This is my seventh book. Um, you can find it on my website, which is animalcompanionsandtheirpeople.com, which I'd love to have people visit because there's so much information about other issues. There is. I saw a lot. Uh, yeah, um, there is. And um, also Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. They can pretty much get it anywhere. Um, but this is the chronicle of the the 46 dogs that we've saved and each one brings a different tale a lot of terror a lot of trauma a lot of sadness a lot of upliftment a lot of inspiration a lot of joy it's a wonderful book thank you I mean, so I much. just thought it was terrific thank you so much if they go to your website there are videos there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, how can someone locate their local SPCA they could just Google, Google that it. Th that's your best bet yes what would you like to leave our viewers with? You, we've got about 30 seconds. What mm -hmm. one thought would you like to leave them with? If you possibly can, adopt an animal in need. Um, they need loving care and they depend on us. And it's such a gift for us. They deeply enrich our lives. Diane. Lou mm -hmm. Hitchcock, who has <laughs> totally relaxed on the floor. <laughs> I'm so glad he's comfortable with he us He really now. does need his close-up. He really does. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on our show today and oh, talking about this important, important issue. Our pleasure. Thank you. We'd like to thank you very much for joining us today. And if you're looking for a companion, consider going to the SPCA or your local pound and see about adopting that animal from there. And remember, pick up a good book, sit with your companion, and read. We'll look for you next time here on Conversations Cafe.